despair didn't have long. It was now mid-morning, and even though Eric was supposed to be at school, there was something infinitely more important to do than algebra, saving his best friend from certain death. Every secret military operation needs a code name, began the old soldier. Hush was one I remember from the First World War. What should we call ours? Eric thought for a minute. Bananas! You what? Code name Bananas! The old man wasn't convinced, but he didn't have a better idea. Well, I suppose Gertrude does like bananas. And what are we trying to do is bananas. You're right there. Let's get to work. First, Sid ordered the boy to fetch some paper and pencils from a drawer. Then the pair began sketching out a giant map of the zoo from memory. Together they could remember every pathway and animal enclosure. Next, they pinned the map to the wall. Now they had a view of all the exits and entrances, and of course, the location of the gorilla's cage. As the animals trotted back into the kitchen one by one, having been fed, Sid and Eric used the map to dream up a number of plans to rescue Gertrude, each one wilder than the last. One, the pair disguise themselves as gorillas. Then they break into Gertrude's cage. There they stay until the zoo closes when they reveal themselves to Gertrude and break out. This had one big flaw. Someone was bound to notice that there were three gorillas in the cage and not one. Two, they commandeer a Royal Navy warship from the Thames and sail up the canal that backs onto the zoo. Next, they blast a hole in the fence with a torpedo and snatch Gertrude. Then they make their escape through London's network of canals. This could be the perfect plan, if not for one little thing. They didn't have a warship. OK, three. They dig a tunnel all the way from Sid's back garden to Gertrude's cage. Then they could smuggle the gorilla down the tunnel to safety. But it was many miles from Sid's house to London Zoo, and digging the tunnel would take a number of years. Sadly, they didn't have years to save Gertrude. Four. The pair pretend to be the king and queen on a royal visit to, the, to London Zoo. Once inside, they say that they want to keep Gertrude as a souvenir of their visit. However, there was no chance they could pass themselves off as royalty, however hard they tried. Five, they build themselves a giant paper plane and launch themselves from the domed roof of St Paul's Cathedral, the tallest building in London. From there, they swoop down over Gertrude's cage and snatch her into the air. The problem was they'd used all the paper to draw a map of the zoo. Six, they make a dummy gorilla and smuggle it into the zoo. Once inside, when no one is looking, they swap the dummy gorilla with Gertrude before making their escape. The big issue here was that they didn't have a dummy gorilla. With neither being good at arts and crafts, they also didn't have the faintest idea how to make one. Seven, they smuggle themselves into the zoo in sacks of food. Once inside the zoo, they cut themselves out of the sacks, find Gertrude and make a run for it. The sticking point here is that they might well find themselves being fed to a lion instead, which, although nice for the lion, would not be so nice for them. Eight. They borrow uniforms from Bessie and pose as a pair of doctors. They rush into the zoo carrying a stretcher. If anyone stops them, they said they've been called to help a sick visitor, but instead smuggle Gertrude out on the stretcher under a sheet and bundle her into the back of an ambulance. One big problem. They didn't have an ambulance. Nine, they make the world's tallest pole vault by strapping a dozen or so walking sticks to one another. Then they pole vault over the fence of the zoo and once on the other side, break the gorilla out of her cage. This idea was dismissed as fast as it had been dreamed up. There was a very good chance the boy would break both his legs upon landing. This wasn't such an issue for Sid, what with his tin legs, but pole vaulting at his age did not appeal at all. 10. They steal a tank and smash through the fence to the zoo. Then they blast a hole in Gertrude's enclosure, scoop her up and speed out. If anyone tried to stop them, they could spin the big gun in their direction. There was one teeny weeny problem. It was very, 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 very dangerous. What seemed like hours had passed and the pair still didn't have a plan. It wasn't until Eric was idly staring out of the window that an idea finally hit him. Like most ideas, it was so bonkers, it was brilliant. 
Bingo, exclaimed Eric. Bingo, bongo, what are you on about, boy? asked Sid. I've got it. Got what? The plan. Sid clattered over to the window to see what the boy was staring at in the sky. You don't mean we use a, began the, whole, the old man. Yes, a barrage balloon. Eric had spotted a barrage balloon earlier when coming out of the underground station. It was one of hundreds flying over London. Barrage balloons might have looked like airships, but they were unmanned and tethered to the ground. They had netting or cables stretching down from them to a military truck on the ground. They bobbed around in the skies over London to make it more difficult for enemy aircraft to enter the airspace. It meant the Nazi bombers and fighter planes had to fly high over the balloons to avoid them. This made them an easier target for the British anti-aircraft artillery on the ground. If the planes flew too low, then the guns couldn't spin round fast enough to hit them. Higher in the sky, the guns had much more chance of shooting them down. So, talk me through this plan of yours, asked Sid. We steal, began Eric, I mean borrow a balloon and fly it over the zoo. Once we reach the gorilla enclosure, we open the top of her cage and pluck Gertrude out. Then we make our escape across the sky. The old man stared into space, lost in thought. Uncle Sid, said the boy, Uncle Sid, what do you think? I think it's the least worst idea we've had, he finally replied. That means it's the best. Yes, I suppose it is, said Sid, a flush of worry on his face. But how do we know it's going to work? We don't, not until we try. Good answer. Now let's work out how we could fly a barrage balloon. Upstairs in his bedroom, Sid had a collection of books about the First World War. In a book about old German war machinery, there was a chapter on zeppelins. These were the airships used as bombers and scouts in the First World War. Unlike barrage balloons, zeppelins had engines and a gondola underneath for a pilot. That's because they were designed to fly rather than just float in one place. However, Eric was sure there must be some way of piloting a balloon, perhaps using the truck on the ground to which it was tethered. The problem was that time was running out. He looked at the clock on the kitchen wall. It was one o'clock in the afternoon. There were only a few more hours until darkness fell. The zoo director, Sir Frederick Frown, had said that Miss Knoll was to put Gertrude down as soon as the zoo had been closed for the night, which was five o'clock. If the pair were going to save the poor beast, they had to act fast. 